Big Lou Barbecue. Now, things I want to do, let me tell you what I got going on for you. Going to do some, I'm hanging some ribs in my drum smoker, and then we're going to put them in cast iron. Yeah, instead of wrapping them, I'm putting them in cast iron. Now, I've done this uh, several, this technique for a few years now uh, with pork butts and with like chuck roast and stuff like that. I got a video on chuck roast right about there, okay, uh, where it's in a skillet and then I put a lid on it. Uh, I got videos where, I, several videos where I put, take a pork butt and I put it into a cast iron pot and uh, let it finish off that way instead of wrapping it up in aluminum foil. And uh, so when you get to the stall part, you know, when I usually used to wrap ribs, but last year I got this oval uh, roaster from a Cajun Classic. It's based on the old Birmingham Stove and Range fish fryer. And uh, there's several brands that make these. Lodge used to make one, but most of them are made in uh, Asia now. Cajun Classic's a local regional brand around here that sells in mom and pop hardware stores. But you can buy these things at uh, Cabela's and Bass Pro, and you can buy them uh, at other places as well. But this oval roaster, it works well for ribs. Uh, I'm doing two racks a day, but I've done three in there. I assume I could do four. I don't think I could do more than four racks in it, but I have done three racks of ribs with this same technique. Uh, don't worry about the recipe. I will tell you, I cut the up. Uh, they were spare ribs. I cut them down to St. Louis cut. I use the rib tip meat, that little flat meat and everything. I season that real salty, real spicy. And I use that uh, for seasoned meat, throw in a pot of beans or greens or other things. And so I'll be smoking that along with it. But then when we get to the wrapping part, just the ribs are going to pot because they're going to be, you know, sweet and heat like ribs should be. Um, so anyway, I put, um, Smoky Sweet Rub from Southern Living on there. I make that uh, rub. It's one of my favorite rubs, uh, and uh, it's a recipe. I got lots of rubs in the cabinet already made up, but I made this rub just for that. You've seen me use that uh, Southern Living uh, Sweet and Smoky Rub. I also make it a little spicy, sweet, smoky, spicy rub. And then um, a barbecue sauce I got to use up. I made a video about it a few weeks ago. It's called Extinguisher Barbecue Sauce. It's jalapeno and pineapple flavor, and um, it's made by a local group here. Anyway, you can see that video right there as well. Anyway, uh, let me show how I put these uh, ribs in the smoker. I'm gonna hang them for about three hours. We're gonna put them in the um, cast iron pot for about an hour. We're gonna put them back on the grate too. So anyway, thanks for watching. Big Lou Barbecue. Put these ribs on. That's Jealous Devil Charcoal down there with some apple wood. I did light it with my loof lighter. And uh, I cut these uh, St. Louis ribs from spare ribs. And I'm just gonna hang them like that. And uh, let's get it right over the fire. All right, and I hang them from the third rib here. With these short hooks. They're gonna be just fine. That one's kind of close to the fire, but I'm not worried about it. Now then, I'm also gonna be hanging the uh, flat meat and the uh, rib tips and the sternum and all. And uh, you know, I use this, I season this with Cajun seasoning and real heavy with the SWAT team, that's soy, Worcestershire and Tabasco. And I use this stuff for uh, seasoning meat. So that'll be done well before the ribs but um, I do like to use this stuff. I'm using my Thermoworks square dot today. I could use my regular dot because I don't normally use a meat probe when I cook ribs. All I really need to know is the smoker temperature, but I'm using the square dot because it gives me an average of what my smoker has been for the past little bit. And uh, I really like using the um, square dot. So and pull off all this stuff, that's this rib tip seasoned meat that I talked about, the flaps and stuff, pull all that off. Then we're gonna get the ribs off and we're gonna put them in the cast iron instead of wrapping them in aluminum foil. This would be the point where most people would wrap them in aluminum foil. All right, got me a new Cajun pit stick. It says Big Lou Barbecue on it. This is a small one. First time I've had a small Cajun pit stick, but it's really good for this kind of thing. All right. So all that goes in beans and greens and other things. That's just gonna be seasoning meat. And let's get the ribs off. Look at that, and the ends aren't burned. They're starting to bend a little bit. That one's, you know, that was the longer one, but that's all right. Okay, I'm gonna uh, get this out of here and put the grate back on. All right, I got the uh, grate on. I did put it in upside down, but it'll go right side up, so it'll say Big Lou Barbecue. Uh, one that uh, in an Ugly Drum Smoke Texas, Ugly Drum Smokers Texas Facebook photo contest a couple years back. Uh, it was made by Short Rib Drum Smokers. I do recommend them. Now this is some jalapeno pineapple barbecue sauce made by some local folks. And you could put butter or whatever sauce you wanted to on the ribs at this stage. Um, I really like this sauce. I need to use it. I did a review on it. Uh, but you can use whatever kind of sauce you want. Some people put uh, squeeze butter. People, some people put all kinds of things on the ribs at this stage. And uh, I'm just gonna set them right here in this Cajun Classic Dutch oven instead of wrapping them in aluminum foil. And that's the point of this video. I'm also gonna be putting some uh, jalapeno poppers on here. 
And I got some Zumos and some Boudin to go on too. But right now, cover it. And um, I'll show you what it looks like in an hour. I do want to raise the uh, temperature to about uh, 300. Here's some jalapenos. And it looks like I'm gonna have to move that over a little bit. Put these jalapenos here. I did a, a review on this jalapeno rack and uh, tell you what, I really like it. And as, as I want to talk and brag about it, the jalapenos fall out of it. Look at that. Holds 10 of them. That's stuff with uh, cream cheese and uh, chorizo. Also gonna be putting on some local uh, brands of sausage. This is uh, Beasley's Green Onion and Cheese. Here's a bunch of Zumo's, all right. Um, Zumo's uh, Party Time Sausages. It's out of Beaumont. Beasley's is out of Boone, Texas. And uh, it's all good sausage. Try to use regional brand sausages if you can find them in your grocery store. Support that. But if you can't, I tell you what, um, you can order these things online probably. Uh, I'm not affiliated with any of them. I just like them. Zumo's Party Times are delicious on like a hot dog bun or just, just to eat. And over here, some Foreman's Boudin. Foreman's made in my own Louisiana Parish. Love Boudin. And uh, this goes good with a little cookout. So anyway, just gonna put the Boudin there, close it down, let the poppers and the sausages all go. And uh, you blink your eye, we'll be back in an hour. Check on those ribs. Well, well, you blinked your eye, but it's been about an hour. Look at that. Should be about time to pull these peppers off. That's the Zumo. These things are fantastic. And my, much more milder than a hot link, but much hot, spicier than normal sausage. So they're real good. If you don't like hot links, you'd like this though. Um, the Beasley's green onion and cheese sausage. That's gonna be good. So go ahead and pull these off of here. But what we're looking for is these ribs, right? Ooh, that's hot, man. All right, now, they should be Look how easy they've been. You're looking for the bend test? There's that. Probe test. Yeah, they're tender. It's hard to tell temperature on ribs because you got so much bone and everything. But you're looking, you know, if you can find a good meaty place, 190 to 200 is good. But it's still really hard because if it's near the bone, it might be different, you know? Anyway, these are real tender. You can see the bend test. So, uh, let's try the top, the bottom ones. See what they're like. Yeah, they bend too. Uh, they were thicker, so they don't bend as much. But I'm gonna let them probably go just a little bit longer. And I'm gonna take them out and um, set them on the grate. So go ahead and pull off the jalapenos. And get these sausages out of here. That's what the boudin looks like, if you're interested. All right, the pepper poppers and the sausages are off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this whole rack out like this. This whole pot. Now, we'll put them on meat side down. And let that jalapeno pineapple barbecue sauce set on there a little bit. You know what, let's go ahead and turn them meat side up, bone side down. And uh, let that go five, 10 minutes. I've got this up uh, about 300 now. So the thing's pretty hot because the door's been open. So anyway, um, that'll set up on there and uh, these ribs will be done momentarily. All right. That sauce is getting good and set on there. Just look at those ribs. They're going to be fantastic. Look at that bend test there. All right. These are thicker, but look, they're bending now, okay? So, we'll pull them off of here and I'm throw them right back into that cast iron oval roaster and I'm gonna leave the lid cracked on it so that they don't continue to steam, but they stay in there and stay warm because that oval roaster is still quite warm and that's how they're gonna rest. And I'm gonna rest them maybe 10 to 20 minutes and then we'll cut into them. Look at that, look at that. Did that fall off the bone ribs? It's got them. Shut the smoker down. All right, well, these ribs came out really tender. They were really juicy. That apple wood made them absolutely delicious. Also with that pineapple uh, jalapeno barbecue sauce as a local made sauce, they were wonderful. Now, I like my ribs to be between 
chewy as pork chops and mushy as uh, pulled pork, and these are perfect. I like to bite through them, not gnaw on them. All right, I'm going to cut them open and show you the smoke ring. Like I said, applewood doesn't leave as dark a smoke ring maybe as hickory or mesquite might, but they were absolutely wonderful, juicy. Everybody enjoyed the ribs, and I was told by some people that we shared them with that they were the best ribs they had ever had. Anyway, uh, if you've got one of those long oval uh, Dutch ovens like that, Try dropping your ribs in there instead of wrapping them in aluminum foil or butcher paper. I want to say thank you for watching. I usually say it in Spanish. Gracias por mirar.